Hi, and welcome to this fireside chat around the AI-enabled SOC. My name is Joel Stradling, Research Director at IDC. I'm part of the European Security and Strategy Team, Security and Privacy Team, sorry. And it's my great pleasure to have with me today, Geert van Linden from Capgemini uh, to talk about this topic. And before we kick off, um, Geert, if you wouldn't mind just perhaps saying uh, a few words about yourself and, and your position at Capgemini. Hi, Joel. Yeah, it's good to have you uh, in this uh, fireside chat and um, looking forward uh, to our discussion. Uh, my name is, as you already said, Geert van der Linden. I'm Dutch. Uh, I'm the Executive Vice President of Cybersecurity uh, and Cybersecurity Business Lead of uh, the Capgemini uh, Group. Okay, excellent. Well, um, without further ado, I think we'll just get uh, straight into the, the topic uh, that, that's uh, in front of us today, which again is the AI-enabled SOC. You know, uh, Geert and I have been having conversations um, le leading up to doing this fireside chat. And before we really get into those, well, deeper technological issues about, you know, the artificial intelligence and application in the cybersecurity uh, operation center, we were going to talk a little bit about um, an upper level theme, that theme being trust. Um, and uh, on the one hand, you know, we agreed trust can be a little bit difficult to measure and intangible. But um, for the purpose of cybersecurity, you know, we, we see that it has become a boardroom level discussion. CISOs are very um, interested in you know, strengthening their trust metrics. And I think, you know, my first question to you, Geert, is around, you know, with, with an artificially enabled SOC, um, if a company is deploying it correctly, does that mean that you could trust that company's security posture as being more strong? Uh, or have I got the wrong end of the stick? No, you're, you don't have the wrong end of uh, the stick, <laughs> but I don't think it's that uh, black and white, uh, Joel. As um, if, if, if a company only uh, has an AI enabled SOC and for the rest, uh, the company is doing nothing. No, I cannot trust this uh, company uh, more. Uh, at the same time, if uh, a company has an AI enabled SOC on top of uh, other security activities and security measures, etc., I know they are very serious about uh, cyber security. Uh, so it adds up. Uh, and it's the extra layer uh, that uh, AI driven SOC often brings uh, that tells me that I'm partnering with a company that is very busy, uh, very serious about security, where I can lean on, that I can trust uh, as part of my supply chain uh, to, to, to deliver a secure service or a secure product uh, to me. So yes, it helps, but it's not and never black and white. Yeah, okay, yeah, but that, I, I think I, I agree with that. And again, you know, we, we, we've been looking at the trust metrics at IDC and it's quite, uh, quite a big thing to sort of try and get actual metrics on and measure. But, you know, so certainly that you raise a great point around the supply uh, chain. You know, if, if a company decides to do business with another company, um, they want to know if they can trust that. And of course, there are ways that companies do that today. They check, is the company compliant? Does it you know, adhere to NIST principles, just yep. as an example? Uh, and that's particularly so, let's say, with ransomware attacks or supply chain attacks that we know are quite uh, rampant. And it takes me to sort of the next question, which is around, you know, those um, uh, types of bad actors that are intent on doing damage or are very crafty today in, in, in let's say, hiding malicious code in, in software, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and the suppliers trust each other, it's a great way for that, you know, trust to become exploited. And so, and at the same time, you know, the other point is those sophisticated uh, cyber um, criminal groups also can deploy AI. Um, so, you know, uh, it, uh, what advantage do we have as an industry if we have an AI enabled SOC against, you know, the bad players that are also deploying AI? Well, uh, it, it, it starts with, uh, if you know that the bad guys have uh, AI and uh, are using AI uh, to, to stay at the same level in your defense as the attackers is, you need to use uh, AI too, because AI helps you to identify complex patterns, to identify faster uh, attacks and then it gives you the ability to respond faster. So um, the fact that the bad guys are using AI means that we also need to use AI for defense. On top of that, uh, AI also helps us to uh, find the right remediation faster uh, where it is needed. 
uh, and where uh, humans are simply um, not quick enough to make the right uh, decisions. So for me, AI is a must um, and because the bad guys are doing it, but also AI helps to prevent false positives. Uh, the success of cybersecurity is depending on the compliance behavior of our employees. Of if your employees are not willing uh, to do uh, to be secure and are um, trying to avoid security, then the human being becomes the weakest link. If employees see that uh, AI helps to prevent false positives, they are willing to comply more with cybersecurity and the human being becomes the strongest link in your cyber defense. Okay, yeah, but that's very interesting. And that, that false positive actually is a, a, a great theme to, to introduce into the conversation too, because you know we see again a, a whole bunch of challenges facing the industry around the volume uh, of, of well, th threats, attacks, but also uh, alerts and, and false positives. And um, so, you know, a single human analyst, of course, uh, it's quite clear, can't process his <clears throat> uh, you know, in, in his workplace hundreds and thousands or indeed millions of, of those, those alerts, but an AI engine, you know, does have that capability. Um, and so, you know, are we, because of that, are we moving towards the autonomous SOC? Uh, do we need humans at all in, in a SOC environment? And also, how, what does it mean in terms of play, the, the play or the relationship with the skills shortage? I think perhaps that's kind of too many questions in one. The first question really is, yeah, no more humans required, and then we'll get to the skills one after that. Well, um, I, I, I look at that a little bit uh, different. Um, I don't think analysts will uh, disappear out of a sock. Uh, that, that's, uh, you, you, there are too many uh, sensitive decisions that you have to take uh, as an analyst, uh, uh, too many interpretations you have to make uh, to leave it to an uh, AI engine. Uh, I, I look at it the other way around. Huh? With an AI-enabled SOC, you don't have one or three analysts in, in your SOC. You have 20 analysts in, uh, in, the, in, in, your, in the SOC, and they are all working together as one team. So you're empowering uh, your analysts uh, with a, co a couple of virtual uh, colleagues. So uh, uh, where AI can gather faster information, can explore faster, uh, massive amount of data, can recognize patterns, uh, can interpret pat patterns, can search for uh, known patterns and give advice to the uh, analyst, uh, you strengthen your uh, SOC uh, with, uh, with AI. I don't think that uh, a SOC completely without analysts uh, is possible in the near future, simply because humans are not always taking uh, and want to take the most logical decision. Uh, where an AI will take the most economical, logical decision if they have to make choices, we humans uh, are not always taking that same uh, decision. And it's also depending on uh, on differences in, uh, in in different parts of the world. In Europe, we make other decisions than, for instance, in in, in Japan, because we have other uh, ways of valuing uh, things. No one is better than the other. It's simply different, and that's where you always need a human uh, being. Yeah, that that makes full sense. Um, that 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 level of uh, human intervention is 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 essential because of those well. Um, um, aspects like empathy and, and understanding and having some context. Um, of course, the AI engines can can learn some of those things, but yeah, it, it needs that human watchover uh, uh, and input in, in, in some cases. And so, uh, you know, getting on to the skills shortage area. So, um, okay, uh, if we have um, analysts not so deeply involved with just looking at, I don't know, tables of hundreds and hundreds of alerts, but it, that that function can be taken over, not entirely, but to a degree. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think in my mind that frees up the IT team or the security team to focus on other things, you know, making security as a business enabler uh, and other areas. Um, um, so the skill shortage is, is addressed to a degree um, or is it compounded? Because now you need, you know, security people with AI skills. 
you know, what is the impact uh, around that organizational aspect of the AI-enabled SOC? Well, if you make the SOC more effective, uh, you need less, uh, less uh, people. So that helps with the shortage uh, of, uh, of people. At the same time, if you can focus uh, the analyst on the real complex questions, uh, then uh, or support an analyst uh, to see the patterns, uh, to give advice, uh, the skill shortage on well-trained analysts is also solved. So that helps a lot uh, by, uh, uh, by using AI on the, uh, the shortage of the amount of people and the skill gap uh, that we see in the, in the, in the, in the SOC. Okay, great. And I think um, another, one of the areas that questions that we and I had discussed before too was around machine speed. So it's sort of circling back again to the sophistication of cyber attacks and I guess the threat landscape. Um, but you know, if we if 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 attacks are taking place um, at, at machine speed, you know, how, how can we respond to that again as an industry? And, and what part does the uh, AI enabled SOC have to play in, in supporting that defense? Well, the, the, then you see two parts of the AI enabled SOC, and that's one is the, the, the fast detection, and the other side is uh, the, the fast remediation. And as you know, Capgemini uh, is uh, uh, a, a serious player in the, in the intelligent industry. Uh, we, we, our engineering division is uh, developing self driving cars. Uh, we are working with uh, uh, boats that are uh, uh, self-driving, uh, but also uh, smart devices in houses, uh, smart devices in factories, uh, etc. Um, and the speed of detection is essential. And with more complex attacks happening every day, uh, because the bad guys are using AI, the faster you can see an attack coming, directly at your factory, directly at your plane or at your car or in the supply chain, the faster you can take uh, the remediation actions. Sometimes you simply don't have the time uh, that we had in the past uh, to, to respond to an attack. So detection, detection speed is essential to protect us uh, in the intelligent industry, but also the speed of remediation. You don't want to wait when you're driving your car at the highway at 120 kilometers an hour uh, for uh, analysts uh, to make up their mind uh, to uh, have a meeting uh, together with uh, five other colleagues. And you want speed in detection, speed in uh, response. Yeah, yeah I, I agreed with that point entirely, that fast detection and fast remediation really, really, it's a game changer and uh, well helps us keep just one step ahead of, of, of the bad people. As you mentioned, uh, yeah, it's kind of like cops and robbers, kind of like cat and mouse. We have six month cycle to, to, to develop technology to protect. And then, you know, as soon as new uh, security mechanisms are, are launched or deployed, then the bad people are already trying to uh, to crack into that. Um, but certainly, the, sorry, go ahead. No, I said absolutely. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, the, the old arms race, uh, but now it's in cybersecurity. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, great. And it, this sort of point, I guess, the machine speed attack, the the, the detection, the fast detection, the fast response is that leads to the next question. You know, I, you and I were speaking about this hundred percent accuracy. Of course, we agreed that that that's something that cannot be possible, but the accuracy should increase. And I'm talking about you know uh, false, uh, identifying false positives, but then actually yeah. also detecting those attacks that are indeed attacks, attacks and responding. So. Just in terms of accuracy, you know, again, we agree 100% is not possible, but, uh, you know, with legacy security technology, that percentage could be uh, lower around whatever, 60, 70% uh, as some type of estimate. But as you deploy um, AI enabled SOC, the accuracy increases tremendously. So do you have some um, yeah, observations around that or would you agree? Oh, I, I agree. 100% yeah. is not possible. Um... But uh, the, the, the development, uh, as I see it, eh, where uh, security is becoming more dynamic, uh, more depending on context, uh, the, 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 the pressure on accuracy is, is, is growing. Um, so the more accurate our protection is, 
the better we are protected. That's logical, but also uh, uh, accepting the measures of security is higher. So employees uh, are willing to accept uh, security if there is a logic and if it's correct. So uh, that helps a lot. Uh, uh, and when we were still in a static situation, and we have seen with the whole COVID uh, pandemic that the world has gone from a static situation to a more dynamic situation, uh, is that um, we want protection that is fitting the way we are working at the moment, our way we are handling at the moment. So uh, as a nice example, um, when I walk into the office, I don't want uh, extra layers of uh, uh, logins, etc. If I want to do my email and I want to use an application for uh, for the company, because I'm in the office, I was checked in the front desk, uh, I have my badge, etc. But if I'm walking on an airport, I don't want. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to accept extra layers uh, of uh, security. So where you see. Uh, where, and that's where AI is going to help us. And that's going also back to, uh, to the new way of working, but also the, the uh, intelligent industry that, with the dynamic security. Depending on the situation, uh, we want extra uh, precaution. We want extra layers of uh, security. And of course, the airport is a simple uh, example, uh, but a, a very beautiful example. Uh, 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 a company asked my advice at uh, recently was that they had an application where uh, there was medical information of employees in it, of uh, people in it. Uh, and everybody's saying that should be well protected and nobody should have access. Unless I'm at the first aid in a hospital, uh, then I want the doctors to have access to my uh, medical information. Of course, then it's needed. But I don't want uh, someone else when I'm walking outside, even if he has a doctor's degree, uh, when I'm walking uh, in, in the forest or when I'm walking uh, in the city center to access that data. So AI will help us with a more dynamic approach on, uh, on cybersecurity, and that makes the protection more accurate, uh, and that helps uh, for the acceptance of uh, the security measures. Okay, excellent. Well, we've um, run out of time. We've um, uh, yeah, we've hit the top top of the uh, top of the hour or the minute necessary for the, the fireside chat. Uh, this has been a wonderful discussion. So I'd like to thank you very much, Hirt, uh, for your, your great contributions. And also, I'd like to thank the um, audience for for tuning in. Um, so all that remains to say is thank you very much and and have a good day. Thank you, Joel. It was a nice conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you.